The manual input sessions is the performance, the manual input workstation is the installation, but it's basically the same software. And this was created by myself and Zach in, uh, in early 2004. Uh, it, the invitation came from the Whitney Biennial for us to do something, some kind of performance that would uh, be at the kitchen uh, in May of 2004. And so we basically just had a week together to kind of bash something out. And we, we had been thinking for a while about using the hand, and that the hand was the next frontier for us uh, as a very expressive, you know, gestural system that the body had. Uh, we didn't want to work with uh, fancy other performers, though we wanted to just do it ourselves. And, and it, may, it would make things simpler, where we would both develop the software and also be the performers who would use it. And so we, again, we developed interactive software that uh, in the manual input sessions or manual input workstation would allow people to explore a, a variety of interactions developing from hand gestures. And the, some of the core ideas are very similar to what I've talked about before. For example, uh, the ability to specify both uh, a shape and also its, its quality of movement uh, simultaneously using a single gesture uh, was, was one of the, the scenes that was there. Um, and these, the, 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 the performance involved um, several different scenes, some of them, again, using, uh, <clears throat> well, all of them based on the shadows of the hands, some of them using interior contours, some of them using you know, positive contours, some of them using negative contours, and different kinds of, of interactions that develop from it. Here, you can see, and once it gets that white blob in the upper left, then it extracts the contour and shows that in the upper right. Each shape that we have here gets its own, its own contour and its own identity. You can see how they're labeled independently like that. So one of, one of the scenes in the manual input workstation or manual input sessions is Rotuni. And Rotuni began as, a, as an idea I had while I was at Interval some years before in which uh, shapes, positive shadows, uh, would um, be interpreted melodically. And the idea is that every shape would be sort of uh, interpreted it as, a, as the basis for, for generating a, a melody in which um, a sweeping radius arm, like a radar, would, would move circularly around the shape, uh, starting from the centroid of the shape, or the, the average center point of the shape, uh, and projecting towards the edge, and then stepping around the shape, you know, 16 times per rotation, or 16 angles per rotation. And depending on the length of that radius arm from the centroid to the edge, you generate a note. And if, if the centroid was, if, if the if the radius arm was short, you get a low note, and if it was high, if it was long, you get a high note. And so in this way, every shape would have its own um, unique melody. And a circle would make a drone, because it would just be a constant radius. But a square would have a certain pattern. A uh, triangle would have another pattern. And it was repeatable. If you put down the same shape, you get the same melody. Additionally, the project also supports polyphony, so I can use each shape to make its own melody. These are just bits of cardboard. One thing that's kind of special about it is uh, that it uses two projectors in kind of a magical arrangement where it's kind of an augmented projection. The, the digital video projector is projecting into and around the shadows of the hands that are coming from the analog overhead projector. So there's a couple interesting things about that for us. I mean, one is that it's a recovery of, of an old-fashioned kind of projection technology. It has a lot of nostalgia for some people uh, and charm. Uh, the other thing about it is, though, is that there's a kind of a very subtle perceptual thing that happens with it that I, I like a lot. And this is that um, the overhead projector is an analog light that has effectively infinite frame rate and infinite spatial resolution. If you look, there's no pixels that chop up the image into tiny little bits. And uh, there's no flicker uh, because of the incandescent light. It's effectively always on, and, and um, so there's no frame rate. The digital video projector necessarily has a frame rate and necessarily has pixels. But because the video projections are being placed into and around one's analog shadows, 
the framelessness, the, 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 basically the high spatial and, and temporal resolution of the analog projection kind of bleeds into the video projection uh, in a way that I, I haven't really seen elsewhere, where it almost feels supernaturally um, analog all of a sudden. And that's kind of a special project, uh, aspect of the project for us.